I have my pike militia brace in there, it's holding back all no those cabs. Cab on right, cab on Let's keep the front line there. Let's try and hold it. I'm working on it, buddy. We should be good. We should be good enough. Ooh, 15k crit there. Got him. Nice. Like, dude, I literally stunned him right there, too, right before you shot him. That was, that was beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back for another unit gag. We're going to be looking back again to Season 3 today with the Fort of Brachio Pikes. This is a unit that most of you will probably have played already. And if you haven't played them yourself, you've definitely played against them. Because they changed how all pikes were played forever when they came out. And if you've ever tried charging a unit into a 40 line, this Total War clip might be hitting different right now. The Fort of Brachio Brace can end an entire unit or hero faster than probably anything else in the game. But before we get into the gameplay, we're going to look at unlocking them, their veterancy, and of course their best doctrines. So to start, unlocking them is actually pretty fast, being in the earlier of the units to unlock within its season. So you'll only have to work your way through the Condottieri Guards first, if you haven't already done that. And that's a unit that's definitely worth having anyways, and I do have a guide for that unit as well. But for those of you who missed Season 3 or weren't playing yet, don't worry, you can always change the season that you are grinding through in your F5 menu. And of course, like all seasonal units, you do not have to spend any honor, so you can be grinding through multiple unlocks at the same time. Now if we switch over to the Veterancy lines, I think there is really only one option for this unit, and that is the top line. Pretty much every single node in the top line is going to be increasing either damage output or brace damage output with plus 11% piercing damage, plus 15% piercing armor penetration, plus 12% critical value, plus 20% penetration when braced, plus 6% damage when braced, and then finally the big elite skill to top it all off is its ability to hit one extra unit per attack, and that immediately doubles their damage output in one node. The bottom line does have some noteworthy bonuses though, Primarily the plus 29 piercing defense, plus 26 slashing defense, plus 20 blunt defense, and minus 20% cavalry damage. But if you're placing and microing your unit correctly in battle, you'll avoid the need for most of those defensive buffs anyways, and you can just focus purely on the damage. As for the doctrines, I think the two most important are going to be the seasonal doctrine and a strong piercing defense doctrine. The damage bonuses aren't super important though, even just some whites are plenty enough, maybe a good health doctrine if you've got one, but generally speaking the brace and its bonuses from the veterancy will insta kill pretty much anything that touches it head on anyways. And then finally a quick look at the stats starting from stock compared to fully elited. And I'll give you a few seconds here and then you can pause the video if you want to take a little longer look. So getting into the gameplay, a huge part of understanding how to play the Fort of Brachios correctly is mastering how to micro their brace, and I want to spend some time thoroughly breaking that down. The brace from the front is extremely strong, but if anything can get into the back or the sides of the unit, or if a hero can CC and disrupt the formation, it can just as easily be torn apart in seconds. And so to master the unit, you have to master the angles and the formations to fit each situation. When talking about formations, a general rule of thumb to go by is try not to be more narrow than the area that you're trying to fill. So the F3 formation works great for spots like this clip, where they still completely cut off the lane despite how narrow the formation is, just because of the small pinch spot that I'm holding off with them. And so all the extra stacked up pikes in a smaller area gives a greater damage output and it also makes it less likely that anything will be able to CC them from the front and break through the formation. Any very narrow alleys, doorways, tops of walls, etc. are great spots to use the F3 formation to get the most out of the forward damage from the brace. Even on the attacking side, 
will try to break around a defending corner. As long as you're not facing an open area for lots of ranged fire to hit into your brace, then you can slowly move around and tweak your angles around corners and pick at the shield and pike formations and trap units from crossing, all while holding down an area for your team to build in advance from, since it's very difficult to push back a fortified Fortabrachio brace, even for the defending team. I actually like to use my Fortabrachios as my starting unit on attack most matches for most maps because they do such a great job of holding open your siege towers for your teammates to flow through. Secondly, it allows you to safely get a little ahead of your unit and poke and prod around with your hero trying to deal damage or force enemies to reposition. And if anybody gets angry enough at you and tries to charge, it's a very quick few steps back into the absolute safety of your brace. First, we check to see that the coast is clear. We go out and back in. And then we go out and back in. And then one more time, out and back in. And sometimes, if you want to do it four times... Yeah. Usually, I'll tuck my unit somewhere safe right off of the start of the match so that they don't get sniped by artillery but also close enough to the walls so that I can call on them whenever the tower is close and they can be ready to move up as soon as the tower lands. And you'll often end up getting a bunch of free units and heroes who try to block the tower as it lands from the other side. But other than that, the F3 formation is mainly a stationary playstyle, predicting where the enemy is going to be ahead of time and having them set up in a very tight lane to completely cut it off. And so the majority of its micro is just finally placing the spot for their brace and being able to read when it's clear enough to move up to the next pinch spot. But also having the timing down to be able to have everything in place where it is needed, when it is needed. As you can see here, even with a good setup and a narrow lane, the timing is just off by a couple seconds and the entire formation isn't fully settled as the enemy attacks. And they're able to just batter it around a whole bunch and I lose way more than I should have. What I should have done here was just had my formation fully set maybe five or ten feet back so that they would have had time to fully set up and then this would have been an easy cleanup from my side. Now as we look to the F2 line formation, placement becomes second to micro. Being able to dynamically brace, move, and re-brace to respond to enemy units at different angles and coordinate with friendly units all becomes paramount. Remember, it's their formation that is most important to them, and the wide stance will often be used in areas where you cannot pinch off your flanks the same way you can with a pre-braced F3 formation in a tight spot. This is instead walking them into dangerous, open territory where a single mistake can mean the entire unit gets wiped in seconds. And people do recognize the threat of Fortabrachios, and players will try to target them in the open like this. And it will leave you much more open to ranged attacks, direct melee counters like Azaps or an Imperial Pike Walk, and hero flanks. One of the best ways to avoid all of these is to try to position your unit sideways towards the fight instead of directly head on. With these Imperial Pikes braced directly in front of me, I have to walk through and I do take a lot of extra damage. But it's still worth it because the second they walk my unit head on, my unit will all immediately die. And so by rotating sideways here, I'm able to 1. Cut off my side flanks with a wall, and 2. Position to avoid the walk but still directly damage them as they're marching by. Which you'll see here in just a moment after a few quick repositions to catch other units charging through and trying to hit some easy flanks on us. No, I got kidnapped. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, 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 no. But then as the enemy reforms for a second wave of defense on the point, and a full line of Fortabrachios is able to make it down behind a set of Imperial shields, the same principle comes into play again. Pull up sideways to the action and get a bunch of side hits in on the enemy. Now the enemy Fortabrachios do actually try to respond to this and reposition as well to face my unit, but a quick bit of CC on them ensures that they don't get to set the formation and they just fall apart. 
So I want to talk about the way that you actually micro the placement of your unit as well. As I move in to support this fight, I realize that I might get caught out of position on the way from the smaller fight that's happening behind me. But I also know that this area is way too open for me to take on multiple heroes and units alone. So if I just set them on one move order towards my team, the unit starts moving single file until they reach the end of the move order and then they reform the line. Instead, I very quickly tell them to reform over and over again as I move backwards with them staying close. This way, they are always moving in the line formation already, and all I need to do is stop giving more orders, and they will very quickly set a brace right where they are. And this can be one of the best bait strategies with any unit in the game, as when they come in for that back charge, the pikes drop and massive damage starts hitting right away. Secondly, this type of aggressive micro moving forward with a team that can protect the front line can be nearly as effective as an Imperial Pike advance when it comes to clearing the way, except that it doesn't end and it doesn't have a cooldown. Supporting teammates like this to the final point can be devastating, and is great at holding back all the high tier melee and cav that always comes to save the home point. Additionally, once the point is cleared, breaking back in through those Fortebrachios can be a daunting task, even for the beefiest of melee. Now that doesn't mean that attacking forward with the F3 formation is impossible or a bad idea, it's just a matter of reacting to the situation. It's much more rare to find an opportunity to push forward like this, but here in this narrow archway, the F2 formation would just leave half of my unit bracing into the wall anyways, and so I can capitalize on the extra damage here with all pikes forward in on the F3 formation. And if this starts to turn or go bad, I can just reform them into the F2 formation along my wall to the left and keep my unit safer while still denying entry through. So the last thing that I want to cover is a handful of final wrap up points for the unit that don't really deserve a huge breakdown on their own but are still noteworthy and then I'll close up with the giveaway info. So like all high value units do not ever position statically in an area that can be trebbed. Most maps are going to have safe areas near objectives that you can position in safely for 95% of their time on the field and that you can draw them from for the few moments that they are really needed as this is a very common first target for trebuchets whenever possible. Do not use the brace on a staircase. Position either directly above or directly below stairs but never in the middle. Any brace set in the middle of a staircase will suffer severely as pikes do not point up or down, only forward. What this means is that normally, if a unit or hero can hit the front men in the line, they will be supported by the back of the formation with their long pikes. But on stairs, the back pikes won't hit or support the front, so they can lose their formation extremely easily. Finally, they are highly susceptible to ranged fire, and so it's important not to get too greedy. Many times after a fight is almost done, I end up losing half of my unit chasing down what seems like free ranged in the back just on the way there, and it's almost never worth it. Stick to what they do best, area denial. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps get a more dynamic grasp on what is still generally considered a purely defensive unit and how you can still use it strongly as an attacking force in Season 5. For the giveaway guys, it's as easy to enter as always. Simply like the video, be subscribed, and leave a comment below which of the Season 5 units is going to have the biggest impact on the new meta coming up. Thanks again guys, and have a good one. Take care.